<laughs> You're so nice, I haven't done anything right now, right? So. Okay, thank you so much. I think we start, three minutes part three. Uh, yeah, welcome to uh, the Digital Product School, uh, to Unternehmertum and to um, a talk that is called uh, What Agile Really Is About. My name is Tobias Berkowski and I am your Agile coach for today and I work at the DPS. Uh, the DPS is um, a, a funny system where we throw some uh, participants, students or alumni or young professionals on the one side in and also some real world problems provided by some companies and in the end we have some digital products, apps, websites or sometimes even hardware involved products. And uh, yeah, that's funny because uh, they, they stay at, DP, uh, at uh, our system for three months and in the end they deliver products. And to make it more interesting for the core team, we are guiding these teams, uh, we sell the products up front. Yes, that's funny, it makes it more exciting for us, you know. Otherwise it would be boring for the team. And because this was so um, uh, successful, uh, we are doing this right now in a very similar way. It is called Digital Schmiede. And there the problem spaces are provided by some ministries of Bavaria. The rest is really the same. And I am telling you this because today my job is to teach my students at the Digital Product School about the Agile mindset. So who is a student of mine at DPS? Yeah, most of you. Okay, thank you so much. But DPS is part of Unternehmertum, the biggest entrepreneurship center uh, in, in Europe. And uh, we yeah, were asked by our nice uh, OKR coach, who's sitting over here, Monica, um, to uh, uh, collaborate with other uh, uh, parts of Unternehmertum a little bit more. So we thought, OK, maybe we open this talk and we invited also all the um, employees of Unternehmertum. So who is an employee of Unternehmertum and not part of DPS? Oh, thank you so much. OK, wow, OK. And to make it even more complicated, we said, hey, if we do, if you have to book this expensive room, then we can make it full. So we invited everybody else as a guest and said, you can join us. So who's a guest? There's nothing to do with Unternehmer too. Yeah, hello, welcome. Thank you so much for, for joining us, for the trust. And to make it even more complicated, we have some of my students uh, with us in Zoom. Yeah, can wave me. Can you hear me? Can you see me? I hope so. And to make it even more complicated, we are streaming this live on YouTube. So you can see me, I can't see you. So if you have any questions, good luck, I'm sorry. Okay, any questions to that? I'm in the wrong talk. Whenever you have a feeling of the wrong talk, just leave the room, okay? Come in, go out, whatever, that's totally fine for me. Okay, today I'm supposed to talk about Agile, what Agile is about. Well, Agile is an adjective, right? It means, uh, yeah, it comes from Latin word um, uh, agilis, means dexterous, easy to move, quick, and fast. So what does this adjective have to do with digital products? If, if you imagine I'm Peter and I'm a consultant, freelancer on the market, and I, I go to a company and I say, well, I, I would advise you to use release trains. And you should hire me as a coach. Uh, then I will help you to do a transformation process. And give you some leadership trainings, and in the end you uh, develop a certain mindset, what would you say? Would you book me? Yes, you would book me, thank you very much. What about the rest? Okay. What about if I tell you that you should do an agile release train, and I'm an agile coach, and I can show you how you do an agile transformation process, and after this I can uh, give you some agile leadership trainings, and to develop an agile mindset. Would you book me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, so that's the problem today. So if you would like to sell something, then it's, uh, you, you might sell it much better if you call it agile. And that makes it not easy to understand what really agile is at its core, because it's really used from everybody everywhere. And you might find some things, and if you understand what really the core of agile is, you might wonder yourself, so why did they call this agile? And today my goal is that you can test this on your own. Okay, so if you see something, say, wow, is it agile or not? I would like to give you some, 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 some methods and tools uh, you can check on your own. So you don't call me all the time, okay? Because you can't answer the question of all the thousand 
uh, participants uh, that fast DPS already during 18 batches. Okay, um, some people say Agile, yeah, to explain it easily, is just uh, quickly adapt to change. Have you heard this? If you're Agile, you need to quickly adapt to change. Yeah, that's it. Okay, what I not so often hear is that uh, quickly causing change made, made uh, much more fun if you learn how to do this. For example, if Google change, uh, changes his algorithm, a lot of companies in the world and freelancer and whatever need to adapt to this change that was caused by Google. So how do we get there? Um, this is a basic talk, so you won't get there today, I'm sorry. Maybe, I don't know. And uh, you might not get there in the end of DPS after three months. Because it's really not enough time to high wolf. Uh, to, um, to develop really uh, 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 yeah, uh, the age of mind so that far. Yeah, but it's just keep in mind as we go. We start super easy. So the, the, the vision of yourself might be, you know this movie? Yeah, how's it called? Star Wars, okay, it's a movie Star Wars. Yeah, uh, just looking more, I'm too old for you, you know? But it's called Star Wars, it's Yedi, yeah, the, the Yoda Yedi. And he might say, reacting to change fast, you need to learn until the change itself you become might be the goal. But how do we get there? And I know, hey, we start super easy today. Okay, we start with the ground. Yeah? You don't need to know anything about age all. We start with very, very basics today. And therefore, in the first part, um, I will just tell you a story. You can sit back, relax, get some drinks, enjoy, maybe laugh a little bit. Then we make a short break. Then I want you, you to do something, and then we, we dive into the uh, digital uh, world if we have time for that, because I'm not well organized. I always know, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, this is my neighborhood. And on this floor, there lives a senior woman. Let's call her Granny. And she loves milk, but it's super hard to carry it into the second floor. And there lives Claire. She had a, yeah, what you might call a different childhood, made her way up, but now she's a strong and independent woman. She could carry milk, and sometimes she's missing somebody to talk. Yeah, they meet at the stairs, and yeah, you know what happens? They like each other, and uh, they live happily until something happens. Angie moves in, and Angie, yeah, is new in town. Don't know so much many, uh, so many people, and she, uh, yeah. Watched her, her granny, but her granny died. Now she moved to a new town. And one day she meets granny on the steps and they connect immediately. Okay, so they became best friends. What happens next? Any idea? What do you want to happen next? A bitch fight. A, bi a bitch fight. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Let's make it a bitch fight. If you want to, yeah, you ask me to. Okay. Um, <clears throat> One day, all three of them meet at the stairs, and Granny says, hey, good to meet you. Next Saturday, my birthday is coming up, and I would like to invite both of you. But I need to warn you, because my hands are shaking, and I can't bake a cake anymore, so my son is always buying one, and it tastes horrible. So be aware of that. What happens next? Angie offers to bake one. Yeah, what is Claire doing? Yeah, she offers the same thing. And Granny said, oh my God, you're so lovely, you can do it together. What might they say? What a wonderful idea. <laughs> what a wonderful idea. <laughs> Maybe we just make it a cake fight. <laughs> okay, you make a cake, I bake a cake, and in the end we see which cake is better. Oh, is this okay for a bitch fight? Yeah, okay, so we have a cake fight. Yeah? A pillow bitch fight, yeah. Okay, the cake fight is on. So let's jump into, oh, what's this? Oh, yeah. Uh, so the challenge is, we have Saturday, There's Monday, uh, we have uh, Sunday. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and on Saturday, 4 o'clock, there's a party. So the challenge is that you have five days, one, two, three, four, five, to bake the best cake you can. You, you might say, may the best cake win, may the agile force be with you. Claire. Claire, yeah, likes to, to train a lot. And uh, yeah, one day, she met Peter Marlin called PM from his friends, you know. 
And it turned out that accidentally, PM is a professional project manager. Let's continue calling him PM. Um, and he said, okay, that's, yeah, that sounds like a cool challenge, you know, we can make a project out of this. I know how to handle this, I'm a professional project manager. It's super easy. We just need to collect all the requirements for this challenge. Then we have to cut the cake into layers. We delegate the layers to people and then we make a plan. The better the plan, the better the project. Sounds easy. So they start. And they first of all collect the requirements, okay? So they join a, a granny, sit down with her and ask her, hey granny, uh, what are the requirements to win this challenge? And this 96 year old lady says, well, I don't know. How many people are coming? Well, let's see, it's my son, maybe his wife, maybe the three children for sure, Hugh, Angie, maybe his second wife, and now his third wife won't come. Uh, uh, how many pieces are each of you going to eat? Oh, my dear, I'm not so sure about that. Maybe Alfred two, the children one. Okay, what cake do you like best? Uh, wow, all these questions are confusing me a little. Alfred always bought strawberry, and I did not like that. Okay, that is how they try to collect the requirements. But what did you learn? What did you learn right now? What should the cake look like? Anything you learned? No? Nothing? What about strawberry? What? No strawberry? Yeah, awesome. Other things? Not clear how many people. How many about roughly? Five, six, seven, yeah, okay. Under ten? Yeah. Anything else? What? The size of the cake? Yeah. Did you learn about this? Yes or no? Maybe? No? Okay. No? Yes? No? Yes? Yeah, so uh, under 10 people, so yeah, okay. So we learned a couple of things, okay? So they write it down and say, okay, let's try to prepare a cake for this. Not so complicated. And they try to make a really good project plan. Yeah. So they write all of the requirements. They make a research, decide for a recipe. And then uh, uh, PM says, hey, my friend Pete is a professional um, uh, 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 cake baker. How do you call them in English? Yeah, baker? Is it a baker? Yeah, let's call him baker. And he says uh, he might help us out because the base is complicated and he will make a really good base for us. Okay, so we make the rest. Just outsourcing a little bit, you know. If you, you buy a BMW, there's a lot of Bosch in it. Just outsourcing. Okay, Pete is just a Bosch. No problem, we can do this. Claire will prepare the cream on Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, Tom is doing the fruits. Then we do the topping. Yeah, Claire's doing the topping. We connect it, we decorate it, we have a little buffer. And then at 4 o'clock on Saturday, our presentation, we have the best cake you can imagine. So they start the very next day. Yeah, let's delete the rest, it's the same plan. They start the very next day. And then Pete says, hey, sorry, but I have a day job and I can't work for you full time, so I can start today, but I can finish it on Wednesday evening, so you have the base on Thursday. Oops, no problem, they have a plan. They know exactly what, what, what they need to adapt. Yeah, HR adapt to change, right? So they are on, on plan. Then Clara prepares the cream on Wednesday, and she needs less time than she thought. But when they taste it, it's super sweet, because she, changed, she mixed it up, you know. Not the wheat, but the sugar. There's too much sugar in it, so she's, it's far too sweet. They discuss what they should do. So Claire decides to do it a second time. But because she's trained in it now, she needs a shorter time, so she finishes it on Thursday afternoon. Uh, yeah, middle of Thursday. But, of course, she can't uh, work on the toppings then, while Tom's uh, preparing the fruit. So the toppings, uh, yeah, uh, well, much later. But they are good in time, and then they start connecting it. And do you know that, uh, that can cakes can have different diameters? Pete knew. Claire didn't. So the base and the cream don't match. So the connecting takes longer than they thought. Uh, and then they decorated it, and there's only just a little buffer left, so they just could, could, took a sh shower, but they finished in time. So they collected all the requirements, they didn't increase the cost, and they delivered in time with a good quality. It was too sweet, they did it again, refactored it, and now they delivered a really good product.
So this was really a, a good project. Did you know that about 63% of all the projects fail? because of the reasons are listed on the right side. So what we've seen right now was a super uh, a successful project. Okay. So they celebrate a little bit and say, wow, we are awesome. What's next? What are you interested in right now? I'll tell, I should, I'll tell you about the story. Do the people like it? Pardon? Do the people, the, the participants like it? Yeah, okay, good. But yeah, of course. What, what, like what? The cake. Ah, the, 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 the cake. Would you like to see the cake? <laughs> yeah, like the, okay, yeah. But first, see it. Okay, yeah. It's, of course, good project, good product, right? It looks. How does it look? Delicious or not delicious? Just show me yes, delicious or no, not delicious. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. And Claire tasted it, and she said, awesome, it's really, really good. So Claire tasted it and said, it tastes really awesome, like it looks like. Super professional project, like uh, because of PM, and uh, they're satisfied. Well, I'm allergic to nuts, and it looks like it's got nuts in it. Is she? I don't know. Shall we continue with Angie? So Angie. She is also a super tough woman, okay? She's she, uh, doing some kind of new sports, and she, she's new in town, don't know anybody, but she, she's really tough. Can she beat the other team? Can she beat Claire? So she makes a list in her mind, okay? Walking out in the evening, sitting in the car and making a list in her mind, okay? First of all, I never baked before. <laughs> uh, no, okay, okay, yeah, not so good, but okay, let's take more, okay? I am new in town, don't know anybody who could help me out. Okay, okay. And uh, third one, I, yeah, may, maybe I'm just uh, fucked. Yeah, okay. <laughs> then she thought of Claire and his PM, and she had the fourth point for the list, so I had to know. <laughs> yeah, not such a good start. What would you do in this situation? What would you do? Pun? Hire a baker. Hire a baker, yeah, okay. Yeah, the other team did as well, right? Yeah. Any other ideas? Pun? I buy a cake, just buy a cake. Yeah, hopefully she doesn't buy, buy the cake that the son of the granny is always buying, right? I mean, uh, yeah, okay, buying a cake, yeah. Buy a Thermomix. Buy a mix. <laughs> awesome, yes. Claire is, uh, Angie is young, okay? She's as young as my students, and I know exactly what they would do. They try to get drunk. <laughs> yeah, come on. And there she, on the bar, she meets this guy, you know? We forgot how he looks like. But she said he was kind of handsome, yeah? And they had a drink together and talked to each other a bit, and then it turned out that this guy is working as a lecturer at the Digital Fraud School. <laughs> it, it is told like that, you know? It is told like that. Right. And he worked as an Asia coach for a couple of companies. Before this, he worked as a Kanban coach and as a Scrum master, as a Scrum product owner, and also as a product manager. And before this, he was analyst uh, strategy online, made some online videos for some companies because he studied media technology in Dusseldorf and um, yeah, worked in the film industry before. And it, it is told like that, you know, just uh, some details that were um, told. And um, yeah, they talked to each other. And I think we can listen to them because we recorded uh, the talk. You know, where, where are they? They are. Hi, I'm Angie. <laughs> Hi, Angie. Nice to have you here. Can you help me? Sure. What is the goal you want to achieve? I want to win this challenge. All right. Um, so the most important thing about this challenge is to make a cake that is better than Claire's cake. Is that correct? Yes. Um, well, not really. The most important thing is that we make a cake that Granny likes. Uh, sounds good. So what kind of cake would make Granny happy? Uh, I don't know. But even if I did, even if I knew what cake she would like, I don't know how to bake it. So what kind of cake would you bake in one day? In one day? I still have to go to work. I can't bake a cake in a single day. 
You could ask yourself, what could you bake in one day? Well, I think a really, really small cupcake. <laughs> so, sounds like a plan. <laughs> Tomorrow you bake a tiny cupcake. Once it's done, you'll visit Granny and let her taste it. Um, okay, and then what happens? How would I know? Thank you so much. Okay, so luckily, yeah, thank you so much. Okay. Let me just turn it off. Awesome. So we know the challenge, right? Just, hey, make a tiny cupcake, and you, you, you should have seen the kitchen after this, okay? Like a mess. Kitchen look, looked like whatever. It was really, really horrible. But, um, no, it's a dialogue. But, uh, uh, yeah, what she did is just she, she uh, put some little sticky notes just on the door and just write down what she needs to do, you know? Make a dough. Yeah, first of all, decide for the recipe, then calculate the ingredients, buy ingredients, make a dough. And she just put some sticky notes on the door and she just worked from left to the right side. And in the end, there really was just a little tiny cupcake. Do you think this cupcake can beat the cake of Claire? Not really. Maybe. Not fun? Maybe. 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 No, maybe. But not. Nobody says yes. So, but it's a maybe. Okay, so what was she supposed to, uh, uh, Angie supposed to do with it after it was done? Get feedback. Get feedback, yeah. So she, she shows it to Granny, right? And the, the good thing is that we have a record of this talk too, okay? Hey, Granny, how do you like this cupcake? Thank you so much. It is lovely. Oh, are there nuts in it? I have a nut allergy. I'm so sorry, I forgot to tell. Don't worry, Granny, I can fix that. Anything else you would change on this one? Well, to be honest, chocolate is not my favorite. What would you like instead? I'm not sure about that. Maybe fruits? Thank you so much. <laughs> Maybe fruits, hopefully they don't buy strawberry. Uh, what, did, what, did, what did we learn? What did we learn? Nuts allergy? Yes, no nuts, nuts allergy. What else? Doesn't like chocolate, no chocolate. Yeah. She likes fruits, yeah. Angie might just win. Yeah. <laughs> Not bad. We'll see. I don't know. But okay, yeah, two things for sure. Yeah, no nuts, allergy. Chocolate, she don't like. Maybe fruits, maybe, maybe. She didn't say, I want fruits. She said, well, I don't know, maybe fruits. So, yeah, maybe fruits is just a guess. We know for sure, no chocolate, no nuts. We have an idea, hypothesis, maybe fruits. Okay. What might happen next? We didn't know, right? We didn't plan for that. So our plan ends here. What are we going to do next? What is Angie supposed to do next? Bake a new cake. Bake a new cake? Yeah. It, it's a, we haven't planned this. Right now it becomes obvious, right? That's funny. Yeah, you don't need a plan to know what to do. Okay, then the, the, the next cake. The next cupcake. She said, hey, cupcake is feasible, so I just bake an egg cupcake. And she just, yeah, presented a little cup leg like this, and it looks a little better than the other one, right? Just a little, yeah. And then she showed it to Granny, and accidentally, we have another record of that. Hey, Granny, how do you like this cupcake? Thank you so much. It is lovely. What do you like best about it? Some would say that's too sweet, but I like it that way. What would you change? Oh, nothing. It is wonderful. I observed that you did not eat the topping. I'm so sorry, my dear. It is so crispy that I'm afraid for my denters. Well, thank thank you. you for telling me. Thank you so much. <laughs> what did we learn? It should be soft. Should be soft, yeah. They learned enough. They are right now leaving to do a better job. You see? Isn't that awesome? We are, we are, on, we are on our way. We're on our way. Yes, yeah, sorry. Okay. Yeah, it needs to be smoother. Okay, what else? Sugar. Yeah. Sugar. Sweet. Make it sweet. Make it sweet. Yeah. Pardon? Extra sweet. 
Extra sweet, yeah. Do you remember that Claire made it again because it was so sweet? I, 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 okay. What, what else? What did we learn else? Never trust the third answer. Pardon? Never trust the third answer. Yeah, never trust. Why not? Never trust the first answer. Why not? Yeah. Yeah, I like it. Which would change nothing. You didn't eat it. No. Why? Yeah, there's a reason. You didn't tell me. No. <laughs> Never believe what people say, okay? You need to get trained to understand what they are doing in front of you, okay? So if a, if, if a customer like SAP, BMW says, I want this, say, yeah, yeah, okay, you want this, I, I heard you. Maybe I could do something different, but yeah, okay? Cool, then what happens next? We don't have a plan. Another one. Just another one, it's too easy, isn't it? It's too easy, yeah. It looks like that. What do you think? It's cute. It's cute. Wow, okay. What, what are we supposed to do with it? Have Danny eat it? Yeah, it gets boring, right? Adra, it's, it's so easy to walk Adra, right? Yeah, maybe it is Adra. Oh, sorry, we have, uh, uh, I reached it. I think we have another record, don't we? Yes. <laughs> hey, Granny, how do you like this cupcake? Oh my God, it is so pretty. I love it. Is this strawberry? My son Alfred will love it. Oh, that reminds me of my childhood in Norway. We gathered these berries and mom made us pancakes. They were delicious. Do you remember the name of these berries? I'm so sorry, my dear. I cannot remember, but they were everywhere on the ground. Thank you so much, Granny. That helps a lot. Thank you very much. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> what did we learn so far? Mm -hmm. She likes berries from the ground. Berries from the ground. Granny likes berries from pardon? Yeah, Benny likes berries from the ground that are blessed in Norway. Okay, yeah. Good. What else did we learn? Maybe she likes the pancake cake. Pancake cake? Yeah, make a pancake cake. You get too creative. Okay, I yes, I was too con con conservative when I planned this talk. Pardon, I didn't get it. She likes it if the cake is pretty. Yeah, a pretty cake, yeah. If it looks pretty, cool, yeah. Thank you so much. Do you know any berries that are in Norway on the ground? Any idea? Blueberries. Pardon? Blueberries. Like yeah. Blueberries, okay. Who's, who says blueberries? Uh, what do you say? Clawberries. Clawberries. Okay. Yellow, red, clawberries. Okay, how can we find out? Google, okay, and then if we Google, okay, there are two berries types. What, what, what are we going to do next? Ask the sun. Ask the sun, okay, maybe, yeah, but the sun wasn't in Norway when her mother, right? Hmm. Her mother baked it. Try both of them. Try both of them, yeah, okay. So what, what do you think it is? Is it more likely the clawberry or the blueberry? Picture, okay. See which one you can get. Pardon? See which one you can actually get. Yeah, see which one you get. The feasibility check, okay, yeah. It turns out that uh, yeah, Angel said, okay, blue, maybe it's blueberry. And so she, yeah, what, what, do you, what do you do next? If you think maybe it's blueberry. Show it to Granny. Show it to Granny. You wouldn't bake another cupcake. Maybe it takes more time to ask before it's already Okay. Okay. Yeah, then do it. Just show some, some blueberries to her and ask, hey, Granny, do we have another text? Yes. Oh, yes, okay. Then we have another record of this dialogue. <laughs> hey, Granny, was it this berry? Oh, yes, I remember this one. And there was some dough around it. By the way, how many people do you expect to join on Saturday? It is now nine in total. Thank you so much. Okay, what, what did we learn? She likes blueberries, yeah. There are nine people now. Nine people now, yeah. What else? And there are two days left. Two days left, yeah. So what are we going to do next? <laughs> Create a cupcake with blueberries, okay. Nine cupcakes. Pardon? Nine. Nine cupcakes with blueberries, okay. Yeah. Is it the same? 
make a bigger cupcake, okay? Yeah, or more cupcakes, awesome, okay, cool. So, um, yeah, she spent Friday just baking some cupcakes, and uh, on Saturday, there's the party. And Angie offers Granny a blueberry vanilla cupcake. Super sweet, super smoothy, not crunchy, and no chocolate. And on top, she delivers a strawberry vanilla cup for Alfred. What do you think my granny said? This was perfect. This was perfect. Very thoughtful. Very, very thoughtful. <laughs> what? Thank you, you're my favorite. My, my, you're my favorite. Oh, thank you, you're my favorite neighbor now. <sighs> okay. Oh, <laughs> would Granny say you're, you're the best? Okay, yeah. Okay, then Claire comes in, you know, and you remember, she's done. She had just one hour, she didn't sleep Friday night, yeah, just took a shower and her eyes looked horrible and, oh, she had a fight with PM. And now they join the party and deliver this delicious, awesome cake, which was the product of an awesome, successful project. And they present a crunchy chocolate cake with nuts. <laughs> what might Granny say? That's nice, but I can't eat it. That's nice, but I can't eat it. Oh, I never knew I liked chocolate and crunchy cakes so much. <laughs> I never knew that I liked chocolate and crunchy cakes so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, what is she doing here? Is she telling you the truth? Maybe. Maybe, maybe not. But you lied to me right now, right? said, hey, I'm, I'm going to lie to you because I don't want to disappoint you. You put so much effort into it. How can I tell you now that you wasted one week because you produced something I don't like? Maybe we don't talk about it. Yeah. Not a good situation, right? And then Claire observes that Granny won't touch her cake. But she said, oh my god, it's so lovely, thank you so much, but she doesn't touch the cake. What might Claire think? Try to jump into the perspective of Claire. What does she think? Oh, well. She doesn't like Granny? I say, hey, what? she's not eating my cake. Okay, she doesn't like me, I don't like it. Well, what's going on here? Yeah, she doesn't like me. What else? It's all PM's fault. It's PM's fault. Yeah, I, I listen to PM. Awesome. Yes. Kick him out. Tinder is full of guys, you know. Yes. Why would she eat my cake? I hope she's saving it for the last. I, I didn't get the first part. Why would she eat my cake? I hope she's saving the best for the last. Yeah, so, yeah she doesn't eat my cake because she's saving the best for the last. My cake is better and she wants it for her own. She just doesn't touch it in front of people. Yeah, another fantasy. Other fantasies? I will never bake a cake again, okay? It's so disappointing, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not good at baking. I'm not good at baking? Yeah, yes, maybe it's about me, yeah. A dangerous situation, right? A dangerous situation. What about the fantasies about Angie? <laughs> do, do we have a record of this dialogue between Angie and uh, Claire? Do we? And this was the optional thing, I think. Did, did I hand it out? Yes? Yeah, 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 that's it, yeah. Just read it. Sorry, my fault. Okay. <laughs> we do have a record. That is unfair. You cheated. A cupcake is not a cake. You did two cakes. You pulled granny on your side. I made a cake that she really likes, and I made granny happy. You could have done the same. Interesting situation, right? So, and the winner is, who's the winner of the cake contest? Angie? Yeah, but she didn't bake a cake. It's a cupcake. And she made... Pardon? Yeah, that was not the goal of the challenge. We had, a, we had a list of requirements at the beginning, and we met all the requirements, yeah? Uh, 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 Angie didn't. So why would she win? Unfair, isn't it? So who's the winner of this contest? Angie? What would Angie say? What would Angie say? Who's the winner of the contest? Angie. Angie? Yeah. She won her challenge. Her own. She won her challenge. 
So who's the winner of the challenge between Claire? Who, who cares? Claire cares. AMG doesn't care anymore. She's beyond it. Maybe. Interesting, isn't it? We have to beat our competitor. No, I don't think so. We have to beat him. No. <laughs> I have more, more interesting things to do than beating my competitor. You know, I need to care about my customer. Interesting, right? Then something really funny happens, happens because uh, there is a super clever, smart uh, 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 a child. How do you call the child? The mother, the child of the child in English? Granddaughter? Yeah, it's a granddaughter, right? So the granddaughter's here. She said, hey, how did you manage to make Granny so happy? And she said, yeah, I met an HR coach. Oh, you did Scrum. <laughs> Fine. No, yeah, I, I know it's, uh, it's, it's, it's horrible, but uh, these, these days people learn this in, in, in childhood here. Yeah. In, in kindergarten, you know. There's a scrum class in kindergarten. Yeah, really, believe me. Yeah. So in, in the hospital, after you're born, they do Kanban. I know. You know so. And so, uh, you did Kanban? No, I have no idea what that is. I see. I, see. I suppose you were just following the Agile Manifesto. What would you like to do now? What's the Agile Manifesto? I don't know what the Agile Yeah, maybe you Google it. But before you Google it, we make a short break, just five minutes, okay? You can go to the toilet, grab a drink or whatever. And then I want you just to come together, just three of you, and discuss, did Angie follow this Agile Manifesto or not? And I will just show it to you. Oh, I have a history, sorry. Okay, we'll have a break later. I have, a, I have a his, yeah, I always surprise myself. It's, um, the Agile Manifesto was written in the year 2001. So it's now 21 years old. It's not new. And uh, it's, it's called the Manifesto for Agile Software Development, but now people just call it Agile Manifesto. And the funny thing is that uh, they were just meeting some guys on, on a ski hut and write down some things in there. And these people that met there were accidentally uh, the founders of Scrum, the founders of Crystal, another um, framework similar to uh, Scrum, um, the founder of Extreme Programming, you know, pair programming, test development, all these things, or user story, if you heard of user stories, were invented uh, by here. And all these things were invented before this, in the year 1995, about. So Scrum is older than Agile. People now say, yeah, it's agile, and sometimes Scrum Master say, yeah, yeah, I do Scrum. I, I, I was doing Scrum before people talked about agile, because agile was invented after Scrum. Okay, this is how old Scrum is. And uh, yeah, they met on a hut, and they just tried to find out what do our um, methods and frameworks do have in common? And they tried to compare it, and then they came up with the script and say, okay, wow, what all our methods have in common to develop software is the following. And then they wrote down a long script, okay, about one page. That's really hardcore HR coaches, you know. So they come together for a full weekend. All the people from all the frameworks discuss it. In the end, there's just one sheet of paper. That's called the HR Manifesto. And HR is just a set of values and principles. And there are just four HR values and 12 HR principles. And the agile values are super simple. Individuals and interactions over processes and tools, whatever that means. I wanted to discuss and find out if you can connect this sentence somehow to the story we've heard right now. Walking software over comprehensive documentation. Was Claire writing a document in the beginning and tried to stick to it, while Angie was always delivering a cupcake every day? Discuss it, please, okay? If you find other examples in the story, yeah? Customer collaboration over contract navigation, yeah? When, when Claire, in the end, said, hey, you cheated, there was a contract. Yeah? Maybe you find other things. And responding to change over following a plan. The 12 principles are just behind that and are super similar to them. The first one is just satisfy the customer through early and continuous delivery of software. Satisfy the customer, deliver early and continuously. Welcome changing requirements even late. 
if we would have told, oh no, you find out yourself. Deliver working software frequently. If you make a project and in the end you deliver once, you do not deliver frequently. Business people and developers must work together. Maybe you find somebody who works together. Build projects around motivated individuals. Give them the support you, they need. Trust them, even maybe if they can't make. Uh, the most efficient and effective method of con uh, conveying information is face-to-face -face conversation. Maybe you have observed some face-to-face -face conversation here. Walking software is the primary measure of progress. Walking software. Find examples for this. Okay? So maybe there are other ways how to measure progress. Maybe you have seen some. Maybe one of them was better. The sponsor, developer, and users should be able to, yeah, I forgot this, continuous attention to technical excellence and good design. Simplicity, the art of maximizing the amount of work not done is essential. Have we minimized or simplified something? And then, yeah, the best architectures require, uh, 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 architectures requirements and design emerge from self-organized teams. We will learn, the people that are studying at DPS will learn later about this. The others, I'm so sorry, you will have to read it up somewhere else. And the team reflects on how to become more effective and adjust this behavior accordingly. We can talk about that maybe as well. Okay, let's make a five minutes break. Grab a drink, go outside, don't smoke a cigarette. Uh, whatever, and then we meet in five minutes here. And then I would like you to immediately go together, pairs of three, and find examples of the story of this. After this, we'll run around with the microphone and ask you if you have to find some examples. Thank you very much. See you later.
Bin ich wieder unten? Ja. Okay, welcome back. Now I would like you to continue talking, but just change the topic. Okay, that's super easy. You talked yourself warm, and now you can change the topic. And I just want you to uh, yeah, find two persons. I won't count, okay? If you're four, just two, I don't care. And just uh, 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 watch at the uh, uh, principles and the values I will show again. And then just uh, find arguments for or against the thesis that Angie worked in an agile manner. If you find something well clear, that's fine too, okay? And just try to phrase small, short sentences. Say, okay, Angie didn't work agile because she violated this principle or so, okay? Or find examples, say, hey, yes, she worked agile because she followed this principle by doing that, okay? Just find small arguments. You don't have to make a decision on your own, say yes or no. You just find arguments and we, we discuss it, okay? And then you just have a free chat for five to six, seven minutes, we'll see. And then we'll go around with the microphone. And then this, this will do our agile culture for the too. He will interview you and then we'll see what, what you find. So have fun. And you can even talk to people that you don't know. That's okay here. Yeah. If you want to, you can talk to me or Steffen, Ulf. Yes, Ulf, Natasha, awesome. Hello. We're just doing this exercise, so you can just... Uh...
Christmas. Oh, the presents. The presents is the knowledge that you can grab and carry home and give it even to other people. Because if you share knowledge, you won't lose it. That's my present. Uh, welcome back. Thank you so much. Wow, that was an intense talk for you, I think. So now I'm so excited what you can teach me. And therefore, I would like to ask our Unternehmertum Agile coach, Monica, to run Hello. around and interview you a little bit. Okay, so let's start over here. What did you find out about the questions uh, in the last six minutes? Okay. Um, so we found out that you could find um, arguments for both sides. So both uh, kind in a way um, worked agile and also not. Sorry to interrupt you, but I don't ask you for a wrap up. I ask you for okay. your a very, very concrete short example. Okay, okay, okay sorry. One example. Yeah, um, one example. Very, one example. Um, Angie had a customer collaboration because she always uh, brought the cupcake to uh, for the tasting. It's an argument for it, right? And you find another argument against? Feel free to share it as well if you want to. Okay, so let's see if we find some other interesting answers. Short answer from this group. Concrete, very precise, yeah. Um, okay, um, we think one example is that uh, continuous attention to technical excellence and good design because uh, she like always like next time make a better cake. Um, mm -hmm. To yeah. which uh, value or principle is this uh, connected? Uh, the, the Continuous left, attention. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, I didn't understand this. Cool, thanks. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And which other agile uh, principles did you find in our cake story? Maybe this group, what did you find out? Uh, we found out that uh, she didn't follow the principle uh, between the collaboration between business people and developers uh, because, uh, yeah, they worked together, but the granny was not so clear about uh, what she wanted uh, or what not. Like uh, when uh, she was like, yeah, I like it. And then uh, she didn't like the art stuff uh, to it. So we think this was not the one. Okay. I like your glasses. <laughs> oh, so let's see over here. Short answer to the question. HR principles you discovered in cake baking here? Um, I think she followed simplicity because on the third day she did not bake a cake. She simply showed the pictures of the blueberry. Awesome. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. How about this group? Who would like to answer? So I love the fact that uh, Angie trusts herself, like she was new in the city, she didn't know anybody, but uh, yet she had the trust of entering this challenge and eventually she won it. So the trust one with the star, the, like, yeah, that one. <laughs> Thank you. Should we collect more examples, yes, studios? Please. Yes, please. Okay, so let's see, what did you find out about Agile? Who would like to give an example? Don't be shy. <laughs> um, I believe maybe um, working software is the primary measure of progress. In the end, she managed to deliver like a thing that grandma could eat, whether in the other scenario, since she was allergic, she couldn't even eat the, the cake. So that was not working product somehow. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Interesting, thank you and other agile discoveries. Let's see over here. What would you like to contribute? Uh, I don't know if welcome changing requirements was already mentioned. Hmm. Well, welcome changing uh, environments when late in development. So she was constantly changing her product uh, every time she got more feedback from the grandma. Uh, and in the very end as well, like, uh, because it, uh, like it was chocolate, so she changed that. It was like in the middle of the process, so it's like a big change, actually, <laughs> to the product. Thank you. Is there anything else that's agile 
in this cake baking process that you discovered? Or even not agile, you can both oh, arguments oh, okay, both, I, yeah. ah, okay. Somebody was pointing at you. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I think face-to-face -face conversation wasn't mentioned before. Um, as one of the principles, it was uh, crucial for her to keep asking the questions to actually get the answer. So stick in and hang in there to the face-to-face -face conversation. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see if we can find out anything else. What about you two or you three? <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking about welcome changing requirements, uh, even in late, but the, satisfy the customer as well because she delivered constantly uh, some uh, examples of the cupcakes. So yeah, she, she delivered three in from the first stage to the third stage. She'd like uh, uh, got more experience from Granny, and she like uh, made more. <laughs> more tasty cupcakes for her. You can ask Ulf as well if you want to. Pardon me? You can ask Ulf as well if you want to. He's an alumni of the Agile Coaching Track at DPS. I miss anything. I think she violated number four. Business people and developers must work together. She was not on Tinder, so there was no business person involved. <laughs> Yeah, you got me, sorry. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. So maybe we should conclude with some observations if there were agile principles violated. Are there any other things? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, we find a contradiction to the customer collaboration because one may say that end customer not only Granny but all the nine people in the party, and uh, how was the name? So the she asked only a Granny about her opinion and also about opinion son implicitly. Yeah. But for example, some of family members could have a diabetes and don't eat the cakes at all, be very upset, and Granny ate all the cakes and had a bauchschmerz and and it's bad. Absolutely, absolutely, yes. She just uh, tried to focus on one user group, but ignored all the other users of her product. Yes, definitely. Yes, of course, you're right. You would do it better. <laughs> he was uh, uh, somebody? Yeah. Um, and we also thought she wasn't actually working in a team. So maybe that's violating one of the core principles of self-organizing teams when she was a self-organized individual. Yes. And not very organized, there wasn't really a plan either. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was not a team, not a self organized team, just one person. Okay, yeah, definitely, you're right. You can do better. Should we continue? Yeah. Should we continue? Okay, and there might be also other interesting uh, things that you discovered. Who, what would you like to add and contribute? Maybe Look, from maybe, this group? Maybe also about Claire. Yeah, what, what, what was Claire working agile or not? Maybe you find other examples. We can pass over the microphone even to the last room. Maybe we should also ask this group here. Did you work together? Ah, okay, great. So. We said that um, the size of the cakes were not matching uh, the one that Claire worked on it. Maybe most efficient way of doing face to face, or you know, like they keep make the team like more collaborative. That was lacking, I think, for Claire case. Yeah. Okay, so Claire case, they didn't uh, talk about the size of the cake, yeah. so they didn't talk face to face, and then there uh, was a failure. But yeah, cool. Yeah, maybe another point that uh, continuous attention to technical excellence and good design. It was only a part of the very last cupcake, mm -hmm. but all previous cupcakes were not so fancy good. Yeah. Good the looking. First, yeah, the first cakes were not very fancy. They were just okay. Yeah. Could she have done better? Just wait, wait, wait for the microphone because the other people can't hear you. But in this case, isn't it that uh, Claire had this technical excellence, so she followed this principle? 
That's the only one. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah. But you get the idea, okay? So, she, we, uh, what I just wanted to do is that you don't just read the Eta Manifesto and we just read the sentence after sentence. If you really try to, 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 to match it to something you do, then it's super likely that you end up more agile tomorrow than yesterday. Okay, that's what you can really do in the team. Just sometimes uh, uh, watch the on, off, on, no, off. Uh, just watch the Agile Manifesto and just uh, ask yourself, hey, now we have to make a decision as a team. Yeah? Shall we now uh, uh, split up and work one week just uh, back in the development the front of whatever and we don't talk to each other? And does it violate any, any Agile value or principle? Oh, maybe, yeah, the face to face conversation. Well, maybe then we should meet daily and talk to each other face to face and see what happens, you know? So you really have just a checklist for yourself to become more agile. And now there's, I would leave it like that. Okay, thank you so much for, for, for doing the talk and talking even to people you don't know and uh, bringing up so many um, examples for against and for it, you know? It's super hard to find an example. And I could give you enough examples why she didn't work agile, you know? So, of course, she worked iteratively but not really incremental, yeah? So Granny didn't use a cupcake on Tuesday. What's the value of it? She wants to have a cake on Saturday. So if I present her a cake on Tuesday, so what's she supposed to do with it? You know? So you can find a lot of examples in there. Uh, but we move on. And what's next? Ask a question, what does a cupcake have to do with digital products? Yeah. Now we start. That was just a warm up, you know? So now we start talking about the real topic. Um, Claire just built it the cake layer by layer, uh, one after the other. First the base, then the cream, then the fruits, then the topping, and then it was ready in the end. Uh, and she could release the, the cake just in the end. And it's, you can do the same with just a web shop. Okay? If you just work your software in layers and say, well, first we do the database, the repository, then the API layer, and then the user interface on top, and you build it one after the other, and in the end, you connect it. Remember the sizes, right? When software engineer, we are nearly done. We just need to connect it. We need about a week or two to connect it because there happened some things we didn't uh, think there might happen. You know this from, from classical projects. Okay, so it's really kind of the same. The funny thing is now, how can we cut a web shop into cupcakes? Let's call them vertical slices of cake. They might look like this, okay? So DPS, we don't want you to build layer after layer. If the backend engineer says, I need one week to build the database, I would say there is maybe a more agile way to build a product. Because what we want you to do is you build a vertical slice of your product, release it, push it live, the user can use it, while you build the second slice. Build it, release it, the user can use it. You collect feedback, then you refactor this one and this one, and you build this one. And then you build this one, release the three, and you refactor them, you know, and then you just build one after the other. And that's maybe not a good, such a good um, example, because you know when the cake is finished. You might call this MVP. If you think of single cupcakes, nobody can say how many cupcakes you need to build to have an MVP. You know, it just, you can delete one or add one. No one can say if the product is ready or not. And that's really what, what happens if you really learn how to release vertical slice after vertical slice. There will be a day where you don't care about MVP. I used to work as a product manager and it was a super hard question when my manager asked me, is this product live already? I said, what do you mean live? I mean, we, we have a beta released in our community and then we did another thing and then we, yeah, there are now 200 users on it. So is it live or not? I don't know. So, you know, it's hard. If you really work agile, it's hard to say if, if you're on the one side of the wall or the other side because you don't care anymore. Yeah. And for example, if you would like to, to build a web shop, then you could build vertical slices. And for example, uh, you need to pay. You can pay by Visa. By pay by PayPal, pay by uh, I don't know what. Yeah? And you can cut it into functionalities, and you can definitely, for example, you know the shortcut, buy by PayPal right now, then you don't even end up in a basket in a web shop. You know? So you could integrate pay by PayPal right now, you don't need a basket or something, 
and then add Visa, and then you need to add the payment or whatever. And so you can really rock this directly through and release it. And of course, if you just can pay by PayPal, some users would say, hey, this, this web shop sucks because I would like to pay by Visa. I can't. And they say, yes, I'm sorry, but I earn money with the other 20,000 people that already paid by PayPal while you were waiting just on one feature. The other company decided to just build the payment functionality. Yeah, nobody can buy something until everything is done. And an easy example, sometimes we see a DP, uh, sorry, it's super ugly. Yeah, Marcus didn't have time to help me out as a designer, so I'm so sorry for what this. I don't make copies, don't make pictures. Um, uh, that's a, a web shop. And sometimes uh, we see this at DPS, that people have an idea and say, wow, okay, we find out that uh, yeah, to COVID, more people work at home, and working at home is really hard because yeah, they don't have a home office, and they would like to buy better things to have a better home office, and the most important thing is to have a chair. Most people are co complain about their back, so they would like to buy chairs, so we would like to offer a web shop where you can good, buy good chairs for, you, for your home office. So we, we think about that. And now, no, sorry, you say you want to have to have a, a home office, okay? And then you build a platform in your mind and say, that's our vision. We would like to have a web shop where you can build, uh, where you can buy everything for your um, home office, okay? Chairs and desks and furniture and whatever. Yeah, you can filter them and sort them or whatever. And sometimes people, designers presenting this. Then throw it over the fence to the engineers. And the engineers say, okay, let's build it layer by layer. Call me in three months. And maybe we can imagine a more agile way to do this. And in this concrete example, please count now the features that you might be able to release independently from each other. Okay, try to count them here, right now, and just throw me a number. Don't rush, take your time. Anybody has a guess? There's no right or wrong. Around 30. Around 30. Around 30. 23. 23. Lawrence, I saw you worry. 20? Around 20? Yeah. Okay. I used to work as a product manager, and I know how I would cut it, but I definitely need to consult my engineers if it's possible. Okay? But that's just my way. Yeah? You might cut it in a different way. That's totally fine. There is no right or wrong, okay? But I found, hey, where is it? Hmm? 27 different functionalities that I could release independently from each other, okay? I just marked them. So I would, for example, start with chairs. So I don't care about a desk versions whatever, so I don't need this line. Yeah, I cut it out. A search functionality. If I just use chairs, I just have 107 chairs, and it's okay to scroll them just in the beginning. Not easy, but I don't need to search, okay? So would, would I type in chair? Okay, then I end up with a, a single page, so, yeah? And then, yeah, for, for example, the feature up here, yeah? You, you don't need to sign in, okay? Yeah, you do not need an account to buy a chair, right? You click on the buy button, and then you pay, and you get a chair. So you don't need to sign in functionality or whatever. Not necessary at the beginning, yeah? And there are a lot of things in here, or filter functionality. If I have 107 products, it's not nice to scroll. But if I release it without the filter functionality, people can use it already and always complain about, oh, there's no filter, oh, there's no filter. And other people complain, oh, there's no sorting function. And then you can say, wow, I get 20 complaints because of the filter, but 150 about the sorting function. Maybe I built this first. So easy, right? And so I would just cut them out and just release with seven features you see here. Possible. Yeah, some, maybe the users say, no, I would need, and then they tell me what to build next. And if they say, yeah, I can use it, then I push it live and people can buy chairs while complaining that there are some functionalities missing. That's okay. So, um, what we want you to do at DPS is that you do not discover, and then you have a point where you say, now we have all the requirements, we can start building, 
and uh, the, the engineers are brought to hell in the beginning, and they are overwhelmed in the end, while the uh, 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 IX dealer uh, have time to discover features that they will never build. Okay. Some of our um, uh, partners, stakeholders, sometimes uh, ask for this in the beginning. They say, hey, it would be cool if the team discovers just, and then we can hand over everything you discovered in a list of requirements, hand it over to another company, and they can build it. We could do this, but we know a much better way of doing this. By discover little thing, build it. Discover little thing, build it. Discover, build, discover, build, discover, build, and actually, you're never done. This is why the product management never ends. It is impossible in our time to develop a product as a project, hand it over to a customer, and then step back and say, we are done. Facebook would never do this. Amazon would never do this. eBay would never do this. You know, nobody would ever do this. Digital products had to adapt to change every day. And companies like the fan companies release up to 20 times a day. A day. If you do Scrum, you say we have a two-week sprint, we release every second week, they release 20 times a day. Okay. That's agile, because they learned how to make the features super small, how to make independent teams working on independent features, and they can release it and delete it and whatever, and su be super flexible on the product. If you... So, yeah, that's... Uh, please quote me with this. Um, while a classical project management ends with the launch of a product. Agile product development starts with the launch of a product. If you haven't launched a DPS, a product, whatever that is, in week three or four, we might have a problem. We don't want you to launch at the end of DPS, because then you're doing a classical project. We need to deliver something every week. So we will teach you how to do weekly iterations from week three. We are in week one. People started um, on Monday. Okay. <clears throat> we know that following a plan, yeah. Sometimes we, in the beginning, we handed over to our participants Gyra, powerful tool. Yeah. You can build boards and then work agile on those boards. But they started building project plans with Gyra. Java is an agile tool, but you can use it to build classical projects, no problem. So it's not about the tool, it's about the mindset. Yeah? And if you, 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 you do a plan, it's really cool. Everybody knows what to do. You have a timeline, you know when you're late, okay? It feels so safe, so structured. German people love it, you know? Plans are awesome. They have to be updated, and if you violate the plan, oh, you, you, you were supposed to be finished uh, five minutes late. <laughs> you're not good, yeah? And it makes you feel safe, but that's not how our world is. And we know exactly that making iterations and work agile sometimes feels like this. You might feel lost. That's okay. That's how it is. And you felt lost too. I can't make a cake. Yeah, try. <sighs> okay, try. Was it good or not? We find out. She didn't have a plan, right? Just for the first day, not for the rest. It worked out. It's okay just to accept the reality and listen to what's happening around you. So that's yeah, just a picture of what I told you right now. We don't want you to do the, um, uh, yeah, what you call design sprint or so. You do a research and discovery. Um, and first you discover the problem space, then you discover the solution space. In the end here, you decide which problem you like to solve. We are right here right now. Okay, we started to discover our problem space. You will find a lot of problems in here. One day you need to decide which problem you're trying to solve. Then you will build little um, uh, 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 prototypes, paper prototypes or whatever, and you, you have different solutions in mind, and you will try some solutions out, okay? And then one day you will, you will have the feeling that, okay, we know what solution we should pick, okay? We decide this solution maybe is the best, we start building it. And then some pe people write down all the requirements for this, and then you can do a classical project. And when we ask, where are you, they say, nearly done. The problem is, do I have a picture of this? We won't, don't do this. Do not do this at DPS, please. This causes problems. Uh, we have huge problems because there is a, 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 a hard end at DPS. There's the final product review. We will involve all the stakeholders. 
And if you're late one day, at this day you have nothing. You work for three months, if you're delayed one day, you have nothing to show, no product at all. That's super dangerous. No investor in the world would give you money in our times to do a project like this. It's super dangerous. Don't do it. It might make you feel safe in the beginning. You will mess up in the end. Trust me. I've seen this a couple of times. The funny thing is, if you work in an iterative, agile way, it's more difficult. You decide on the vision you would like to do, and then you write down the requirements just for the most important thing. Think of the chairs, right? Only chairs, only one side, no filter, no sorting, just, hey, I would like to land on a page and I can see the pictures of a chair. If I click on it, nothing happens. Next story is I click on it and that's okay. So I have two stories. That's the first one. I want to see every chair. I want to click on one chair and see the detail page. That's it. No fancy features. You build this, the back end for it, and the front end, you connect it, you test it, and you launch it, you push it live so the user can really use it. Then you do the next thing. If something happens and we must end because of COVID-2 or so, our, our program before week 12, you have what you have. There's something live. Maybe they're not all the features you imagined you would have, but that's just your fantasy. You can dream at night, you know? So a day just reality always is stronger every day. So you, you can't be delayed and you're not stressed out. So if you're super stressed at UPS in the end and say, oh my God, we just have, maybe you're doing something wrong. Because if you really work agile, you're done every day. You can go home and you're done. And if you don't come back tomorrow, it's okay. You have what you have. It's life. People can use it. Maybe you'll earn money with it. It's okay. If you want to build a startup, build it like that, if possible. If you don't know how to do this, join DPS. That doesn't mean that we know how to do this, but we can help you to find out. Um, Okay, um, the, the, the um, students of DPS will learn next week how we do this, okay? What, sorry, this, how you build just one thing in one week. We call this iteration, okay? You, you de decide in the beginning of the week what you would like to build because we are not so good that we can release 20 times a day. FFC, are we? How often did you release in your last team? He's an alumni, he's a participant for the second time at DPS. Ten times in the last week? Ten times in the last week, okay. Yeah, yeah, now you can top this, right? Yeah. So it's not so easy to get there, especially with engineers that are not so experienced. Because if you need a week to build a button that you can push, then it's super hard to make this even smaller and release it in a day. So you need a certain amount of knowledge and uh, uh, skills to be able to work on an HR team. The same for a designer. If you say, wow, okay, I, I, we want to build a web shop, okay, can you just, uh, uh, here's a pen, here's a paper, can you draw me in half an hour how this web shop might look like? If you say, I've never seen a web shop, I'm not a designer, I don't know how to paint, how do I have the pen? You might not be able to deliver something in, in an hour, okay? So that's, that's a little bit difficult at DPS. We know this and it's just a vision, yeah? But last week, uh, next week, we talk about what an iteration is about. So how you can get organized as a team to be able to deliver something within one week. And in Scrum, it is called, you know how this iteration is called in Scrum? Anybody? Sprint. Yeah, sprint. Yeah, it's a famous sprint. A sprint is nothing else than just, yeah, an iteration. Something you do and you repeat for a lot of time, okay? And one single thing of this is called Sprint and Scrum. If you're not doing Scrum, it's an iteration. That's it. If you build iteratively. And one iteration at DPS is one week at DPS. Other companies, they often work in two-week iterations, sometimes in four weeks, but that's really a long time. Most of I've seen is, is, is two weeks. And every iteration begins with the planning. In the planning, you decide yeah, you need a vision first, or where you come from. So you, you need where to go, okay? If you say, wow, uh, let's build a website with chairs on it. No, 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 I would like to, to, to uh, build something for the car. Say, now we have a problem because we need to decide if we talk about chairs or cars. Yeah? Our, job, our vision is to make uh, uh, every people in Germany, every, every employee in Germany would like to work at home because this is more comfortable than the working space in this company. That's my vision. Let's build a car. No, a car doesn't fit my, my vision, so we don't 
deal with cars. Yeah. That's easy to decide. So you need a vision. If you don't have a vision, you might discuss in the planning meeting forever. Because one would like to do the car thing, the other the, 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 car, uh, um, the chair thing. Then in the planning, you come together and you decide what to build. It's an increment. Just a list of chair. No, no, the detail page first. Yeah, there are different things you could agree on. You agree on what to build, and then you make a plan. And this plan is just a backlog with cards in it. And we teach you how to write these cards and even how to split these cards into even smaller cards. We call them tasks. Okay? We have a story that describes what the user can do. And we have technical tasks. Not everybody in the team might understand because they are for the engineers. And the engineers just say, OK, I work on this card, and I'm done. I work on this card, I'm done. I work on, oh, the card is, oh, the story is done. We worked on all the tasks, so the story is live. The product manager says, can I test it? I say, yes, of course. Hey, I can see the website with chairs on it. That's the thing. So you agree on something that you would like to, to have in the end, and you make just a, a, a small backlog of what we need to do to achieve it. Then you start collaborating. We teach you how to do this, and we want you to meet at least once a day. In Scrum, it's called daily Scrum. We call it daily board meeting because we want you to step in front of the board and just say, I work, yesterday I worked on this card, today I will work on this card. That's it. You don't discuss details, you just organize yourself as a team. That's one, one uh, uh, method to, to get organized super simple as a team. In the end of the week, we do a review meeting. Have you had a review meeting right now uh, already at DPS? Fifty said no. Any other opinions? Did you develop a product yet and let it test by the core team members? Yeah. What was it? What? Pardon the software corporations? Pardon the corporations? Internal software corporations. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, any other idea? I tested something today in front of the full batch. What did I test? A story map. You prepared a story map and say, hey, that's okay, yeah, that's cool, we can work with it. And you showed it to the core team. The core team says, okay, I don't understand it. What do you mean here? And how is this working? You said, oh, okay, wow. Now, I'm, maybe we would like to start another iteration to rework our story map because we got some feedback from people outside. That's more or less what a rebel meeting is about. We talk about the product, whatever you did, okay? So we, you agree on the increment and say, we would like to build this. Then you show this, what you built, to yourself as a team, because sometimes you're stuck, you know, you go all the time, then you wake up and say, okay, stop working on it. Have a look, have a look. How, how does it look like? You invite your, your stakeholders, uh, maybe some core users or maybe some core team members, and you review the product together to understand what you need to change. What works good, what doesn't work good, you inspect the product. Then you do a team retrospective. And in the team retrospective, what do you inspect there? If you inspect the product in the product review, what might you inspect? Feedback gathered, yeah. Feedback regarding what? Yeah, product trial. We talked about the product. What could one member do to get the other member? About the team, yeah, there was another hand about that. What didn't work wrong with the communication? Yeah, that's exactly what you do. You talk about how you work together. You don't talk about the product. You know? Yeah, I think this button should be, we don't talk about the button. Yeah, we talked about yesterday, you wanted me to do something, and I didn't understand what, so I built the wrong thing. So next time we maybe, oh, you write to me on Slack. Next time maybe we speak in person. Ah, oh, that's a cool improvement. Let's agree on that. Yeah? So this is really how, how you uh, 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 improve not only the product, but even the team. Because you, we want you to become better as a team. We want it in the end of DPS to be super hard to split up and go into your lives again because your team has become awesome. Okay, that's what you do in perspective, and then you start in the next planning regarding the feedback that you have from here and from here. That's it. Okay. We talk about every meeting next week and we make some, some uh, uh, exercises to practice them a little bit, and then we start into the exploration in week three, and then you practice it, okay? So 
So we don't talk about what a daily is. You do a daily, we watch you, give you feedback, we do it together, you do it again, and you do it for 11 weeks. So in the end, you have maybe a glimpse what a daily is about, because you did it. OK? So I'm, I was faster than I thought. That never happened before. You were awesome. Thank you so much. So now we would have some time for some questions, because I think there's nothing important to know some backup things. Oh no, yeah, the, one thing, there was one question right now. I say, hey, hey, how do you really collaborate in a team? Yeah, this cross-functional thing. I could make another two-hour talk just about this topic because it's really, really interesting. But just, I, I just mentioned one example just verbally. I have another picture for this. If the designer just says, okay, I, I, we know we make a shop where you can buy chairs. Give me a week, I make the design, then I hand it over to you, and they don't care if there are any features in it you can't build because I just rolled over the fence and you have to deal with it. Then you find out that I can't code it and you change the design, so you can code it. You go back to the designer and says, oh, what an engineer. He didn't code what I wanted him to do. What a monkey. I've seen this in a lot of companies. In Germany, we call this uh, silos, silos. Yeah? Then they hate them and they hate them and they never talk to each other and they just throw things over the fence. And uh, yeah, that's very funny to see. You can watch it in a lot of companies. Yeah? It's not about the people, it's just about the system. Somebody could change it, but most of the time, the people didn't join DPS. Um, another strategy would be, I called it double comp strategy. Can we sell this name? It sounds awesome, doesn't it? Double, double comp, yeah? So you, you have a design and the engineer, you just try to merge it somehow together into just little pieces. And of course, you work on the, on the design from the left side to the right side continuously and you develop your software from the left side to the right side continuously. But you always talk to each other and you influence each other. Yeah? Why did this? Um, and one way to do this, for example, is you, you don't deliver a, a design to your engineer because you need some time to think of this, right? All the data, the positions, and the buttons, and the colors, and whatever. This is really a design that involves a visual design. It looks nice. It's designed. You could even make it more ugly and say, okay, I just give you a, a, a wrap-up of it, just a, a paper prototype, or um, something I draw, and you, you have an idea where that is. But you need also some time to, to, to do this and to, to think about how the button, where the button should be, what options do you have. You could also hand over just a set of data to the engineer and say, okay, I know, if, yeah, the, so what's the main content of the website? I place it just in one box and say, that's the main content. Whatever we do, we will find this content on the main page. Below that, there's the most important content, and below that, there's the box with the least important content. I know this for sure. So I'll show you three boxes, okay? In the first box, there might be this information. Second box, there might be this information. Third box, this information. You give it to the engineer and say, that's just the set of data we will need. And a good engineer can work with it. He can start coding something. And when you're done, you hand him over and say, okay, it might look like this. It's the same data, just visualized. This would be an interaction design. This is an interaction design. This is a visual design. We don't want you to be visual designers, okay? To be a designer is not the same than to be a user experience designer or interaction designer, right? Yeah, I see you nodding. Yeah. That's important to understand. And so you can really just uh, work like in the double comp, the double comp strategy, that's so awesome, where you just hand, you, 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 you work on the, the, um, the first thing, throw it over, he starts coding, you, you throw the second thing. And now you see the people collaborating in the daily meeting. Yesterday you gave me the data fields, and now I'm done, I would need something more. Oh, I'm not done, then I, ooh, I need to stop what I'm doing right now and return to this task because I learned that you need it. It's more important. Or the designer goes to the engineer and says, I'm ready with this. Now you can have a new one. The engineer says, oh, I'm so overwhelmed with the rest, I don't need it right now. And the team says, oh, we need to help this engineer or whatever. Then you see the people collaborate in the daily meeting, for example. Super easy as an HR coach. You visit a company, you watch the daily, and you know if the people work self-organized on a team or not. If they don't need to collaborate, they don't work on the same thing. If they don't work on the same thing, they don't build a vertical slice that is releasable after one iteration. Super simple. 
Okay, that was the first question that was not asked was before from you. Are there any other questions from you? Yes, yes, I repeat the question for the, for the remote people. So we just talked about the collaboration between the designer and the engineer in the team, but there's also a product manager in the team, and how does he collaborate with the others, right? Luckily, you joined DPS the first week, and you will learn about this. But it's uh, nearly the same, you know? You don't uh, uh, try to think of, your job is to maximize the business value. You know? Your job, you're the product manager. You say, if, we don't earn, if I can't earn money with this product, we don't need to build it. I don't care if it looks nice or if it's feasible, if we can build it. Yeah? My job is to make sure that we are money with it. That's my job. And the, the three people in the team, we call a cross-functional team, they are super innovative because they always tell each other what is not possible and what, what they want to do. Yeah? For example, the product manager comes up and says, yeah, I would like to uh, have all the data of BMW and place it there. And the engineer says, that's not possible. Then you can say, I want it, you're a bad engineer. Or you say, accept error. That's reality. Nobody cares about my fantasies. He tells me that's not possible. He is the reality. So I need to adapt my plans. Okay, what kind of data can you deliver? Uh, maybe this one. Say, oh, I wanted to start with this feature, but then maybe it's more important to start with this feature. And then the designer says, <laughs> if we start with this feature, nobody will understand what it's about, okay? You would need this for before. And you say, yeah, but then I don't earn money with it. And then you just collaborate all the time. It's really hard work and it's a constructive conflict you're in all the time. And that makes you super innovative. And it's not easy to learn in the beginning and in the end super hard to master, but if you master it, you're unbeatable. I've seen this in, in a couple of teams, you're unbeatable. Then, you know, contract negotiation sometimes is, the product manager comes in and said, I want this. The engineer says, that's not feasible, I give you this. And said, okay, can I at least give this? And then the engineer has to deliver more than he wanted and the product manager becomes less than he wanted. So it's a lose-lose situation. And if you really learn how to do this, there is an emergent effect between the people and you reach more than 100%. I've seen this in companies. Yeah? That you say, okay, I want uh, this SAP system and we need to change the database and then we get this data and we can do this. And the engineer says, oh my God, that's super heavy and then we have to work for this for half a year. What would you do with this data? Well, I would do an Excel export. Oh, you did an Excel export. Let me think. We can do this in a shortcut, and I can build you an Excel export exactly what you want in just two hours. And there's even more data than you requested. And you say, what have we done? We talked about a feature that needs, needs three or four months to build, and then after two hours we are done, and we reached more than we ever dreamed of. I've seen this. So this can happen if you really collaborate in a team, and if you, you changed your position all the time. So as job of product manager, it is super important that you know exactly what you want. You say, build me this. Yeah, build me the chairs. No, the cars are more important. I don't want cars. Leave me alone with the cars. Our vision is there. Yeah, I want the, the, the chair. That's my job. Yeah, but the cars, shut up. No cars. <laughs> chair. Yeah. And then they say, yeah, but uh, chairs, desks, but chairs are difficult. You say, okay, I wanted chairs, but you tell me desks are more, you know. Okay, let me talk to my people, but okay, then maybe we can do with desks. Be flexible. And that's super hard to learn. When you have to be strict and give the team a direction, they can run when you need to be flexible because you, you send them in front of a wall. Yeah. That's your main job about. Is that okay for the moment? Yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for the question, Ali. Yeah, you got me, yeah, you got me. Uh, this iteratively building a product becomes much easier later in the product process. In the beginning, it's super hard to have working software after three weeks if you don't even uh, uh, get committed in the team where to go. And then you need 
to fake it until you make it to get feedback from the users. We have a session on next Wednesday um, uh, where we, we uh, tell you more about this, but one example would be, we did it at DPS, it's so funny, there was a team that wanted to, be, uh, to build an, uh, um, not a chatbot, but, uh, oh yeah, super, um, but um, uh, 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 yeah, a speaking bot, help me out. What's the bot that speaks? Voice yes, a voice assistant, okay. They wanted to build a voice assistant. They found out problem space that in, in hotels, the receptionists sometimes is bored to death because nothing happens, but sometimes somebody wants to check out while another person wants to check in, and the cleaning people would like to know which room to go, and then the telephone rings. And they say, okay, I, I can't deal with all the problem, so whoever called me is lost, and I will never know if this would have been the most important thing to answer. And this team said, okay, that's cool, we built um, a voice assistant, and so this voice assistant will grab the call, will write an email, send it to the manager, and then he can see what, what was in it and answer it. And that needs time to build, right? To discover, okay, voice to speech conversion and so on, and they, they tested this after three days. Pardon? Yes, a visit of us. What is a visit of us? Some I didn't get the first part, so what is a visit of us? So basically, to the user, your uh, system is a black box, and uh, on the other side, like behind a veil, like you don't let the users know, yeah. it's actually the human pretending to be the system and yeah. carrying out the solution instead of like an actual uh, technical system. So yes, exactly, you can do this, exactly. Yeah, that's what's happening there, you know, did you know how this uh, voice uh, uh, bot looked like? His name was Jonas, and he was sitting next to the receptionist, but he didn't talk. He just answered the phone, wrote an email, and sent it to the receptionist next to him, and then he stepped back to wait for the next call. And they could test the full progress without writing any line of code. And the next day, the, the hotel called and wanted to book him for the whole week. <laughs> because it was helpful. And then they said, wow, there's money in it, okay? I said, okay, you, you need to pay me for this. I said, ah, maybe 10 euro a day. I said, 10 euro a day is not so much, okay? So can we make a business case out of it? And in the end, they didn't do it, right? I don't know, no. It's our business specialist, you know the numbers. I just build products. I have no idea if they are successful. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Funny, you, you ask me a question, give the answer. Awesome. Anybody else would like to answer this question? With my little help. I'm not afraid of silence, you can challenge me. Old, I can't hear you. Um, so, before we said that uh, the different uh, functions in the team, like the software engineers, the product manager, and the interaction design, they should all like uh, exchange very closely. Um, like, for example, the PM has like this uh, viewpoint, and then the software engineer jumps in and says this is impossible, and then there's like this constant, uh, yeah, exchange. So, if there's like a if it like takes, isn't there like a situation where it might take too long or there's just a, this disagreement? Like how do you make uh, good decisions? Uh, like, uh, like a kind of trade-off? Um, yeah, like how do you decide on a trade-off? Thank you so much. Yeah, you're making just a commercial for, for DPS. Because accidentally uh, on Monday morning, half past nine, there's a decision-making workshop where we talk one hour about this topic. 
But um, the, the interesting thing is, just one, one hint, if you, if you have a constructive conflict, it's super important that you know your role and your responsibilities. I've worked in teams where I said, I'm the product manager and I would like to have this feature. And the engineer said, no, no, I think it's the wrong one, we should build this one. I said, shut up, it's not your job. I'm the product manager, you're the engineer. You can tell me I can't build it. Or you can tell me that this is super expensive and if I build this feature, it's, it costs you less. But I don't want to hear opinion about the feature because I discovered this with the team, I talked to my stakeholders and whatever, and it's my decision to do this. Having roles in the team is a decision-making method. And most of the discussions we observe in the um, DPS teams is when people say um, we have different opinions on the same topic. And in Agile, it's not so, opinions don't become so um, interesting anymore. You know, say we should build feature A, we should build feature B, we should A, should B, okay, which one are we building first? Um, maybe A, yeah, I can, I can wait a week until we build feature B and see what performs better. You know, so it's really, you don't know what happens. Agile, there's one word in, 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 in or one sentence in Agile that is super important, um, that in a complex environment, you cannot foresee the consequences of your actions. If, I, if my car is broken and I want to bring it to a garage, I park it somewhere and then I move away, go on holiday, three weeks later I come back and the car is in exactly the same state as it was. And I need a specialist who can deal with complicated system to repair it. If I have a team that has a conflict and I go on holiday for three weeks and I come back, the situation might have changed a lot because this is a complex system and I don't need a specialist to analyze it. Um, and dealing with this complex system is, is, is not easy. And it's always a little bit overwhelming. And you need to train a lot. And to be able to do this in a good way, you need to train some habits. What I train with Stefan a lot in the core team is disagree and commit. He says A, I say B. He said A, I say B. He said A, I say B. I want to do B, he wants to do A. And then we ask the core team, make a decision-making method, and A it is. I don't get B. What do I do? I say, yes, A it is. And then I help them to do A. That's not easy. But that's, you know, if I say, no, then I'm not part of the team anymore, I want to do B, you know, I knew it, A wouldn't work. Yeah, you need to disagree as hard as you can, but if the decisions make it, commit, whatever it is. Because this is the only way. If you can't make the team follow you to the left side, you can split up or follow the team to the right side. If you don't follow the team, you're alone. You know, and that's just one habit. And we have a lot of them at DPS. For example, the roles, you know. If you make a discussion, then you need to know your roles, you know. If you say, wow, you want to choose, choose React, I think HTML would have better thing to do this. And the engineer would say, yeah, whatever. <laughs> and then he's doing what he thinks is right because it's his job to decide this. Okay. Did I somehow answer your question? Really? Yes, okay. that's good. Thank you Thanks. so much. Okay, then, thank you so much. We have come to an end. There are two things I would like you to do. Um, first of all, I need three strong men that carry some beer down here. Some of you know where it is. Please grab it and just bring it here if somebody wants some. There's some Spezi as well, I think. And then I, the people at DPS know how we continue, okay? That's the last talk for today, just to relax, calm down, and tomorrow we meet again, and then we continue for the next 11 weeks. Uh, for the people that do not work at Unternehmertum, you can stay in touch, whatever, but I wish you all the best. Thank you so much for your trust. And for the people at Unternehmertum, if you would like to learn more about age of things or whatever, there is something that Monica might want to tell you if I find her slide. Oh, there it is. Where's the microphone? Oh, there. Let me grab the mic for you. Thanks, Patrick. I think it's on. Is it on? Thanks, Tobias, for the opportunity to do some advertising for our Agile coaching offers at Unternehmertum. So this is an information for our internal Unternehmertum colleagues. Um, we have an Agile Movement Slack channel. You are invited to 
join this channel. In this channel, we announce Agile events. Uh, for example, we have regular Agile movement sessions. The goal of these is to share and enhance our Agile knowledge in order to transfer it into our departments and teams. We also have reflection sessions for retro facilitators and we will offer in this quarter a training also for retro facilitators in cooperation with personal development. And there is also a training that is called Agile Basecamp that we will offer on demand. So if you are interested to join our Agile movement, join the Agile Slack channel, get in contact with me, I would be glad to see you again. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Then I have just one request, yeah, two requests. Please bring the beer down here. And uh, the second one, if you like the talk, very happy to hear about it, but if there's something you didn't like, or that was too long, too short, you didn't understand, or the discussion was not helpful, or whatever, please write to me. Yeah, write in Slack, or give me a post sticky note, or whatever, or just tell it to me. Just give me all the feedback, and help the other participants that will come after you to improve our talks. Thank you so much for trusting DPS to join us today, and have a nice evening. We can stay in this room till 6 o'clock, then we are kicked out. But if you would like to continue, we can go upstairs to our space. Have a nice evening. Thank you.